Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a uh, reading update video or like a reading wrap up video. I haven't done one of these in a while, but I will warn you some of the uh, books I talk about in this video were discussed in my mid year book freakout tag because I read a lot of good books this past reading cycle and so I did talk about them a little bit, but I'm going to talk about them in a little bit more detail. And for those of you who didn't watch that video or whatever, you can watch this video. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. I don't want to make this intro too long, but as you can tell, I'm in front of some new bookshelves. If you guys didn't see my last video, it's me kind of like organizing these shelves. If you guys want, I can do like a whole like book collection tour or whatever. Um, I probably won't do it like your average book tour video where you like pull out every single book. I'll probably just kind of do like a quick run through so you guys can see some of the titles or whatever. But if you guys want to see that, I can definitely do it. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and just jump right in. This isn't going to be in any particular order. So the first book that I read since my last wrap up video was Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina. So I actually read a Sherry Lapina book um, a couple years ago. It was The Couple Next Door. And the thing about Sherry Lapina that I've noticed is she's not a character driven writer at all. She does not not focus on character development. She doesn't focus on like you really getting attached to the characters. She picks very basic names like Rob and Bob and things like that. And I just feel like with Couple Next Door and with this book as well, like I literally had no connection to the characters. But at the same time, she's more of a thriller plot driven writer, right? Like you're more interested in the plot and like what's happening and um, you know, the weird mystery crime aspect of it. And so I feel like you don't really need that connection to the characters, but I will tell you, you won't get that like character connection at all. Every time I read one of her books, I sort of feel like it's a little bit forgetful. And I think it's because of the lack of character development. Um, but they're still interesting, like they're good, like crime reads, mystery reads, and they have like really kind of unique plot lines. So this is about like a murder that happens. And this woman that the story is about, um, she was near the scene of the crime when it happened. And her neighbor who was like this major snoop, saw her leave her house. And there was a lot of weird things pointing to her specifically as like being a suspect. And so she's basically trying to fight this. And her husband's very like suspicious, her neighbor's really suspicious. And it's kind of just the story of like who in up doing it and was she involved was she not involved and it kind of has like a unique little twist at the end and overall I thought it was a pretty good book I'm not gonna say this book was like a five star read or anything I'm pretty sure I gave it uh, three stars a little bit on the forgetful side I'm not gonna lie but it was still like a funnish read you know when I was in the mood for like a thriller or whatever but I definitely wouldn't say that Sherry Lapine is my favorite thriller writer of all time um, but she's not like a horrible writer either she's right in the middle for me so the next book was another thriller and it was no exit by Taylor Adams so this book actually was a five star read for me. Now I don't give thriller books five star reads very or five stars very often because I just kind of feel like there's usually just something lacking with thrillers. Like they're really, really good and I'll give them four stars a lot because I like enjoy reading them. But usually there's just something missing, whether it be like character development or something like that. You know what I mean? But for some reason, this one was like a five star for me. I think this book and Verity were like the only two thrillers I've ever given five stars. And this is just a solid thriller. This is extremely suspenseful. Um, I definitely would almost categorize this as like a suspense thriller because I feel like it never ever lets up. Like the entire time you just feel tense while you read it. It kind of has that vibe of almost being like too suspenseful where you're like really could anything else go wrong here? Like everything kind of goes wrong and you're just kind of like eye rolly to a certain degree but it's still really good. So if you don't know what this book is about, it's basically about a girl who's driving over like a snowy mountain to get home for Christmas and she has to stop because the storm is way too bad so she stops at this rest stop and it's like a blizzard so once she gets to this rest stop she can't leave. But when she goes outside to try to get reception on her phone she sees this van and there's like this little hand inside the van and she sees that there's a little kid inside the van and what she ends up finding out is this kid is kidnapped and she has to figure out who at the rest stop, I think there's five people at the rest stop, she has to figure out who's the one that owns the van, who kidnapped the kid and then she tries to like save the kid and it is just a mess. 
but it's really good and it's really 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 suspenseful. I think that part of the reason why I like this book is because I can relate to it a little bit. So where I live Basically, I have to drive over like a mountain pass whenever I want to go to like Portland or the valley or whatever. So I'm driving over a mountain pass a lot. And in the winters, it gets really, really snowy over the mountain pass. And so there's been many times that I drive over snowy, mon a snowy mountain pass. And I was thinking about myself in a situation like what would have happened if I would have been driving over the mountain and this happened to me like what would I have done? And it's one of those stories too where you really put yourself in her shoes. Like what would I have done in this situation? And I love books like that where you can almost put yourself in this book and say, would I have done this? What would I have done differently? Like I probably would have done something completely different. And I like books like that because it really makes you ponder like what you would have done if you were her. And I definitely wouldn't have done what she did in this book. I feel like she made a lot of bad choices, but I feel like it was fine though because when you're in the situation and like really crazy bad things are happening to you you have to think on your feet and you don't always make the right decisions and I feel like it was just really 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 well done. I want to read more books by Taylor Adams because I think he's an amazing writer and he just sucked me into this story. It was so good. So the next book that I read was What I Lost by Alexandra Ballard. So this is a story about a girl who is she's like 17 or something and she's in an eating disorder treatment facility to recover from her eating disorder and in this facility it's like an inpatient facility so she has to stay there and recover and it's basically like her story of recovery in this eating disorder treatment facility but what ends up happening is she starts receiving mail from like this person she doesn't know who this mail is coming from but there's kind of like hints to her past um, that part of the story to be honest wasn't that great I was just kind of like well we all know who it is like it's not that like mysterious like I feel like it was kind of put into the story to give it some sort of plot but it was kind of like unnecessary it wasn't unnecessary but it was just like duh type of thing you know like I don't know it was just kind of an odd little twist to the plot um but what I read this book for is because I as you guys know I've said this multiple times I um was hospitalized and treated for an eating disorder so I've read a lot of books with eating disorder recovery as like the main plot line and this one was really really good. One thing I can say though out of all the eating disorder books that I have read, this one definitely touches on things that are very uh, triggering. She does not hide away from like the tough stuff and when I say that I mean like there's body shaming, there's a lot of numbers and weights and calories thrown around. Like she doesn't hide the kind of stuff that we think in our heads and so if you're trying to recover from an eating disorder I wouldn't recommend reading this it'll be very triggering for you probably um and it's just very interesting but if you want to like learn a little bit about what an eating disorder treatment facility is like this is very spot on I feel like a lot of the things that she experienced I experienced in um, treatment. So this is an own voices story the author did struggle with an eating disorder so she knows what she's talking about this isn't a memoir. This is a fiction story, but it is very accurate because the author lived through it. So this is really, really good. I actually gave this five stars because I thought it was so, so well done and just the portrayal was really realistic. So the next two books that I read were From Blood and Ash. I forgot the title for a second. From Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, both by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the second book. This is the first book. You guys probably already know that already. Um, so I love fantasy romance love it. And I talked about these a little bit in a video. I can't remember what video it was, but these books are so, so good. They're so Sarah J. Massey. Like if you love Sarah J. Mass, these are going to be for you because they're very, very, very similar in writing style, in like storyline, like how she writes. It's very similar. Um, and I really loved the characters. I loved Poppy. I loved Hunt. I thought I liked the side characters. Like everything about these books feels, it kind of felt like I was reading like a Sarah J. Mass novel. Now, there's only one thing that I hate about Sarah J. Mass writing and this lady's writing, Jennifer L. Armentrout. They are so long-winded, it's not even funny. Like, there are times in these books that I was just bored, kind of. Like, she draws things out a lot, especially in this book, the second one. I kind of felt like I was just like, get to the point already. You know what I mean? And a lot of times when she was um, explaining the world and explaining to Poppy kind of like what was happening in the world, it was just like dialogue back and forth and they would just sit around and like talk to each other and tell each other about the world. And that was like her technique to tell the reader about the world. And one thing I don't like about that is that it's boring. 
Like I like it when the world is explained in a very fluid way, right? Like something little here, something little here, something little here. So it's not just like this dialogue going back and forth for like five pages explaining things about the world. I just find that really boring. And some authors are really, really good at like expanding a world for the reader while also just continuing the plot, if that makes sense. And I feel like um, Jennifer L. Armentrout wasn't super, super successful with that. I also feel like these books could have been edited down just a little bit, not only in like how long they are, but in like grammar. But overall, if you're looking for like a really good romance, fantasy, which is like my favorite genre combination, these are definitely for you. So if you guys don't know what this is about, I'm going to just kind of give you like a really quick synopsis. It's about this girl Poppy who is basically held captive by this kingdom and she is the maiden. So she has to stay completely virginal. She can't talk to anybody. She has to wear a veil over her face because nobody can see her. And basically she just has to like stay pure. And everybody is like waiting for their ascension. And when you ascend, you become like this immortal person. Everyone's ascension is based on her purity. And so when she ascends it's like this big deal and then everyone else can ascend and that's kind of like the plot but she doesn't like to be the maiden she doesn't want to be this pure maiden woman she doesn't want she never wanted this life they chose her she's chosen and she's like I don't like this I don't want to do this and then she ends up um, meeting Hawk who is her bodyguard and they kind of end up getting to know each other now that is an extremely vague description of what this book is about because it like expands immensely into something completely more than that. I don't want to give it away though because it'll definitely give away some twists and stuff but that's kind of like the basic basic synopsis of this series. I haven't read the last one yet but I think it's gonna be really good. I'm really excited. Um, I hope that she kind of speeds up that storyline just a titch but the second one definitely ended in like this really unique place and I'm like what the heck? I think it's gonna be really cool. So so I read A Game of Fate by uh, Scarlett St. Clair. This is the Hades Saga 1, but this is like the second book in the A Touch of Darkness series, but it's in Hades' perspective. So it's the same book, it's A Touch of Darkness, just in Hades' perspective. Now, I really liked A Touch of Darkness. I gave it four stars. Persephone really annoyed me in that book, like she was really irritating in that book, but I really liked the overall storyline and stuff like that. Now, I gave this book, a Game of Fate, three stars. Now I think there's a few reasons for that. Um, I really like Hades as a character, so I actually thought I was gonna like this book more than I liked A Touch of Darkness, but Hades, as sweet and as cinnamon rolly as he is, he is so flippin' horny all the time. Like that's all he thinks about, it's all he wants to do. Whenever he's around Persephone, like that's all he can think about. And don't get me wrong, like I love a good smutty book and everything, but sometimes I felt like he was so distracted by that that it was just kind of like distracting. And like, it was just a little much as far as like his personality development went. I kind of was just like, okay, Hades, like I get it. He was so sweet and so nice and everything, but like his, that part of his personality got like really irritating after a while. And I kind of felt like, which is a lot for me to say, I'm just gonna say this and it's like not what I would expect. There was so much smut in this book that it was like overkill, but I kind of felt like she didn't like work you up to it. It was just kind of like, I'm gonna throw some smut in here and I'm gonna throw some smut in here and here and here and here and here. And they were like these really short, like vague little smutty scenes that like did really nothing for the story. I was kind of like, I felt like I was like numb to the smut by the end. It was just okay. Not a lot was added to the plot line, if I'm being honest. It kind of felt like I was reading the same book twice um, and it just wasn't that great. I didn't really like it that much. I do want to read the next book in the series just to kind of see where the story goes um, because this was the same story as the first one so I just kind of want to see where it goes and then if I like it then maybe I'll continue but if I don't like it then I probably won't continue but they're very steamy so going in just know that like that's why she wrote these books. Like these are not books with smut, these are smutty books. So yeah just just know that going in. Um, so the next book is Cancer Made Me a Shallower Person. This is by Miriam Engelberg. I did talk about this in my um, mid-year book freak out tag or whatever. And I'm not going to talk about this too much because I think I said pretty much everything I wanted to say there. But this book was so good. This is a five-star book. And I rarely give graphic novels five stars. Like, graphic novels are such a hit or miss thing for me. Either I really, really like them or like I don't like them at all. I feel like graphic novels are so easy to do poorly and so it always surprises me when I really really like one and this is such a good, good 
story. So this is about a girl who, and this is like a true story, it's like a memoir. So this woman was diagnosed with cancer and then this is kind of like her, basically just telling us the story of her cancer journey, but in like a funny comedic way, which is like really refreshing, especially if you're going through something like this or you know somebody going through something like this. This kind of lightens it up a little bit, it kind of pokes fun at things that suck but it kind of makes things feel a little bit more lighthearted. It definitely would make you feel less alone if you're going through something very similar. It just kind of pokes fun at some of the difficult things. It kind of makes fun of herself. And it's just like such a funny, funny book. I can't explain it. Like it shouldn't be funny and I feel bad saying it's funny, but the way she wrote it, she meant it to be kind of funny. And I really, really like when people can kind of like make light of like really heavy things. I think it just makes life a little bit better. You know what I mean? So really, really good book. And then I read a second graphic novel. This is Stitches by David Small. So I got this at the library and I had no idea what this was about, but I picked it up and I was blown away by this. I gave this four stars, but I feel like I could have given it five stars to be honest, because it was good, like really good, but I can't explain why it was so good. Do you ever read those stories where you're like, I don't feel like I should have liked this as much as I did, but like I really, really liked it. There was just something so captivating about the way that he wrote this story and I can't explain why. So this is about a kid who's six years old and he's living in a very abusive home. His mother is like very silent and quiet. She's always sitting in her anger and just being like a horrible mother. She doesn't really take care of him. Her dad's kind of, his dad's kind of the same way and he ends up getting cancer in his neck and he has to get it removed, but his parents don't tell him that it's cancer. They're just like, it's a lump. And then they just take it out and they never tell him that it's cancer. But when he got his surgery, they took out a um, vocal cord so he couldn't talk. So he became mute. Now this is a true story. This isn't a fake story. The author actually experienced this. And so he became mute and he couldn't speak very well. And so he never talked, but his parents were still very abusive and this is kind of his story about leaving his abusive home and kind of growing and finding himself and becoming something more than like his cancer and his abuse and his trauma and just kind of like moving on with his life and there's something, it just doesn't sound really that interesting but it was so interesting and it was so good and the way that his art is like it's just so good. One thing that I've kind of realized that I really like in books. It's very similar to The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman and kind of like the child abduction um, memoirs that I've read in the past. I love reading books, like true realistic books about young children like six years old. Now I know that sounds really really weird but I really like to see realistic stories through like a child's eyes because I love to see how children handle tough situations. I think child psychology is such an interesting thing because I think children find really, really, really unique ways to cope with trauma. And I find it actually really fascinating. And I've come to realize that I really like reading books through like six-year-old, seven-year-old lenses, especially when they're a little bit more like serious tones, not like, you know, um, Percy Jackson or like fantasy type ones, but like, realistic type stories, you know, and there's just something really interesting about it, I feel like. So if anybody knows any stories that kind of take place from like a six or seven year old's eyes that's really unique, similar to Ocean at the End of the Lane, like I said, I would love to read them. So let me know in the comments below if you know any stories like that, um, because for some reason I just think it's interesting. So. so that is it, you guys, for this video. Not too many books for this wrap up, but I wanted to get this up because I feel like I haven't in a while um, uploaded one of these videos. So let me know if you guys want to see a bookshelf tour. I know I did the organization video, but if you guys want to see a tour, I can do that as well. And also for those of you that watch my beauty channel or my lifestyle channel, I know I haven't uploaded there in a while. I do plan to upload there again. Um, one thing that I'm starting to notice as I'm getting older and my kids are getting older is it's really hard to film during summer vacation. And my husband now works from home so it's hard to film when he is home and I'm finding that filming for that channel gets harder as my kids get older. So please bear with me. My kids are going to go back to school, you know, in September or whatever, and I'm sure it'll be easier then, but um, it's been hard for me to kind of figure out how to keep up with that channel and stuff like that. So um, if you guys are subscribers there, I will upload there again, but I may not upload there as often right now. 
this channel just for some reason is a little bit easier for me to keep up on. The videos are easier. I can lock myself in my pretty room and like close off everybody. And I just find that these videos are a little bit more casual and I think that's why it makes it easier here. So anyways, that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.